Welcome back to Advanced Training, Character Modeling Part 4. We're adding an eye using a simple sphere shape, but the eye seems to stick out of the side of the head. So we'll go into Vert Mode, press B for Soft Select, and then pull those verts out away from the eye. Then back in Quad Draw, we'll hold down Shift and relax those verts until we get it to look right. Now the eye doesn't stick out from the side of the head. But when we move it forward in the side view, we see we still have that problem. So all we need to do is go back into vert mode, turn on soft select, and continue to adjust the verts until the eye is no longer protruding. Also using quad draw and holding down shift to relax those verts. Now I'm actually extruding the interior edges of the eye all at the same time to create a new edge ring. And now I'm just tweaking the verts until I get the interior eye shape properly set up. You may notice that the video is quite a bit faster at this point. That's because we decided to speed things up a little bit because again, just like the previous video, you've already learned a lot about how to use the quad draw tool. So there's not much reason for me to go slow at this point. I'm just using all the same techniques, extending edges and faces, using the relax tool, and basically filling in the rest of the cat's head. And then here I'm just tweaking the verts manually until I get them properly aligned. I think one of the most powerful tools in the quad draw tool set is the relax functionality. Otherwise you would have to manually go in and tweak every vert and edge until it looks right. But with a relax tool, all you have to do is hold down shift and basically paint across the verts to get a nice even distribution of your quads. All right, so we'll just continue on here by creating the polygons of the back part of the ear. Again, using all the same techniques from the previous video, just extending the polygons snapping the verts to create a connection, using the relax tool, manually tweaking the verts, and just rinse and repeat until we get the entire shape of the ear. All right, so in a short amount of time here, we've nearly finished the cat's head. Just wrapping up the top of the ear here. Now we're using the relax tool to just get the edges and verts to be more evenly distributed. Now you'll notice that towards the top of the ear, the polygons get considerably smaller. That can't be avoided, obviously, to some areas of your polygonal mesh, you're going to have that. But for the most part, the size of the polygons on our cat head here are pretty homogenous. And that's the most important part. We're going to go ahead and add our construction plane head to its own layer and then hide that for now. We've also turned off Make Live, so we're no longer snapped to that construction plane. And now we're just making these verts coplanar so that we can prepare to flip it and mirror the head to the other side. We'll do that using the Mirror Geometry tool. And we're going to put this on its own layer called Head. Now we'll mirror the geometry and we have our completed cat head. So now back in the Sculpt Geometry tool, we're just going to continue to kind of finesse the shape of the head. And I've got the settings for strength set really low, so we're just barely making adjustments here. We'll round out the cheeks or the jaws of the cat, sink in the nose area, puff out the nose itself and around the eyes as well, continue to make adjustments there. And just keep tweaking it with the Sculpt Geometry tool until you have the shape that you want. Remembering that we're no longer using a surface, we're no longer snapping to the construction plane so that we can make these tweaks. We'll sink in the cheekbone area there. Using both the front, side, and perspective views at the same time in the four up. And using relax and smooth by holding down shift while using sculpt geometry. Kind of the same way you do in the quadral tool. See here, I'm holding down shift when I relax that area of the face. And he's really starting to take shape. And the great part is, is he has proper edge flow for animation. And he's all quads for subdivision. Okay, so we're moving right along. We're nearly finished with the head here. We'll just make some more tweaks with the sculpt geometry tool. Just continuing to round out the shape and also checking the model sheet view. We'll add a two-up view here so we can see what it looks like in both views, the front and the perspective as I paint. Looking pretty good. 
You can continue to switch back and forth between the normal resolution view as well as the high resolution view using 1 and 3 on your keyboard. See here I'm just continuing to work with the nose area. Now I'm going to work on the ears some. I'm just holding down control and I'm painting to create a hollowed out area of the ears here. Fantastic. Our character is starting to take shape here. We're almost finished. So let's go ahead and move on by doing a little more work on the nose. What we need to do is we need to basically fill in this hole here. So I'm just going to select the edge ring there, the interior of the nose, the nostrils, and then extrude them in. And we'll just scale them down to create a new set of polygons. Now we just need to fill that hole in the center there. So we'll drag it in a little bit further to create the indentation of the nostrils. And then we'll select those edges again and use the Mesh Fill Hole tool. And of course we got to draw in our polygons here using the Multi-Cut tool to make sure that we don't have any strange ingons. We do have a triangle here, but that's not that important in this area. It is okay to have triangles sometimes, but I don't recommend it. We can always fix it later by adding another edge to the nose area. Now it's good to switch back and forth between high resolution and low res display, 1 and 3 on the keyboard, because sometimes adjustments that you make in the high res display will not look good in the low res, as is the case here. So we need to obviously tweak these verts so that it looks good in both versions of our character. Because ultimately, our character will be the low res version in game, and we'll probably use a normal map to give him the appearance of the high res version. All right, so our nose is almost finished, pretty close. Just continue to make a few tweaks here to the verts. And we'll just pull these out a little bit so they give us some more of a puffy nose, more cat-like. There we go. Just fill in this hole here at the mouth that we missed using the fill hole tool. And now we just need to make some adjustments to the mouth area so that we have more of a crease. Right now it looks too smooth. So we're going to need to create kind of a crease here. So we're just going to pull these verts out using the high res preview so that we can get that crease that we're looking for where the mouth cleft is and goes all the way up to the nose. Once again, switching to the low res display, making sure it looks good there. Just continue to make a few tweaks on these verts, and it looks pretty good at this point. Looks good in low res as well as high res. All right. So I hope that you really see the power and flexibility of this workflow from basically creating a construction plane mesh using a simple shape, such as a sphere, and then using sculpt geometry to create the basic shape of your character and then using Quadraw to properly retopologize it to create another version of the mesh that has good topology for animation and subdivision and then going back to sculpt geometry and adjusting that shape until you get exactly what you want and you can see that it doesn't take long to get the shape that you want that has proper edge flow proper topology for animation and subdivision and then of course you can use things like soft select, hitting B on the keyboard, and then making more adjustments to the verts, bringing things out, bringing things in. And by holding down the B key and clicking and dragging, you can change that size of your soft select brush as well. So here you can see that I'm just adjusting the eye area because obviously there's a big gap there where the eyeball meets the eye socket. We need to correct for that. So I'm just pulling those verts in sometimes using soft select, sometimes not, until I get that properly shaped, properly fit around the eye so it's nice and snug. So the eye area is pretty important because the eyes are a big part of facial expressions for squinting, for looking surprised or mad or happy, and you really want to make sure that the edge flow is set up correctly and there are enough edge rings around the eye. You can see I added another edge ring there so that it can properly animate. My eyes in this character are pretty stylized, pretty cartoony, but again, even in a cartoony character, the eyes are, as they say, the windows to the soul. A lot of expression comes out in the eyes. 
So make sure you get the eyes right above everything else. So basically I'm continuing to use soft select and this just pulling the verts into place so that the eyes fit more snugly. Now I'm taking the entire ring of edges around the eye and I'm just going to extrude them inwards and then scale them down a little bit and just continue to shape it so that it matches up with my eye. And if I need to, I can always adjust the eye itself. I can move it a little bit further in or a little further out until I get it all just kind of matched up as closely as possible to my model sheet. But this is the importance of having a good model sheet to make sure that those eyes are, are still in the right place for your character. You can see also I continue to jump in and out of high res versus low res display in the viewport to make sure everything looks right. And sometimes it helps to go into wireframe mode if there are some verts hidden behind another object you need to be able to select them. They're going to be more easily selected in wireframe mode and that's four on the keyboard. So we're getting close to having the eyes finished here. Just using the front viewport on my left there to continue to move the verts around the eye into place. And you can see I have soft select turned on there. Soft select's fall off can be changed by uh, not only holding down the B key and changing the size of the fall off, but you can actually adjust how the fall off works in the soft select settings. You'll find those settings in the actual tool settings. If you were to bring up the tool settings window, which I don't currently have open. Now we're just pulling these verts out around the edge of the eye there on the outside to make sure we have basically an eyelid. Same thing around the top. As I said, it's pretty important to get the eyes right, so that's why I spend more time on the eyes than pretty much anything else on the face. And it's a little bit difficult to get the eyes right as well. So it takes a little time, but you'll get used to it eventually. Soft select really helps here. I could also use the sculpt geometry tool here, which I didn't, but you could use sculpt geometry to extrude out some of those faces and verts or bring them in or even smooth them out. That's the great thing about LT is it has quite a few different tools that can all be used in conjunction. They had, the workflow uh, works really well together. So I've used my little x-ray script to x-ray the eyeball itself so that I can get a better look at the interior verts of my eyelid which will allow me to tweak them and get them more properly positioned around the eye. Just using soft select again here, making some final tweaks. Starting to look pretty good. We'll just make a few more tweaks here. We're very close to being finished with the face, adjusting the verts around the eye, the cheek area, as well as the nose making sure that we have our cat anatomy over on the side monitor, looking at what a cat's face looks like, definitely helps. So now we'll just go ahead and re-symmetrize our face. So I'm gonna delete one side of the mesh and just use the mirror geometry tool to get back to a fully symmetrical version of our head. All right, 